Hey guys, Sean here. Welcome to the F1 Word and to the first of 10 short videos where I give a few of my thoughts on how I think each team and driver has performed this year. Now, they're not going to be like full-on reviews or anything like that. Just a few of my random ramblings as usual. As is the case, every year the aim is for these to be around five to seven minutes long. Some will be longer, some will be shorter. And they will go out between now and the start of 2021. Once again, I'll work in reverse championship order. So to kick us off, it's Williams. Now, it's been a year of change for the team as it heads off into a new era following its sale to Drilton Capital back in the summer. Of course, bringing to an end the Williams family involvement with the team. It was a sad day when it was announced, but it has secured the team's immediate future and kept a lot of people in work, so it must be seen as a positive. But after 43 years, it's thank you and farewell to Sir Frank Williams and, of course, the whole family and what a legacy they leave behind. 128 pole positions, 114 wins, 312 podiums, 7 World Drivers titles and 9 Constructors Championship titles. I think it's fair to say the team was a long way off that kind of form in 2020, but I have to say there has been a definite step up in terms of overall performance. Sure, they were still last in the standings and actually are a point worse off than they were 12 months ago but there have definitely been a number of improvements. For starters, they arrived on time for pre-season testing, but more importantly, they have been much closer to the pack than they were last season, and I'd argue, ended the year with a quicker package than Haas and were at the very least on a par with Alfa Romeo at some tracks. They may not have scored a point, but they were on the fringes at times, picking up four top 11 finishes, so the progress is clear to see, and with its future secured, the team has now got a solid platform to build off. I fully expect we will see another step forward next year, but with 2022 on the horizon, I really wouldn't be at all surprised to see a lot of focus put on that new car, and understandably as well. George Russell has been a shining light for the team too, and just like Williams has taken a step forward versus last year. I should say at this point that any stats you see on screen for Russell will not include the Sakir Grand Prix where he drove for Mercedes. They will just be based on his Williams results. But George has impressed many this season, especially with his qualifying performances. He made Q2 on nine occasions in 2020 and has definitely earned that nickname that Sky loved to give him of Mr. Saturday. He really has been superb. However, whilst he has no doubt impressed, there have been some big mistakes that have cost him massively, none more so than losing control of his car under the safety car and crashing out whilst looking good for points. It was a costly error and whilst there were others this year, I'd say that was a real low point of his season with Williams. But to be honest, I don't think that's something we should hold against him too much. For the most part, he's had a very, very strong year and seems to be improving with experience, perhaps as you might expect. He has also, once again, thoroughly destroyed his teammate in qualifying, although it must be said there isn't all that much between them when it comes to the races, but more on that in a moment. Overall, though, he has definitely had the upper hand and has led that team well. And I must say he really does have a mature head and that will serve him very well going forward. Of course, we have got to talk about his brief stint at Mercedes filling in for Lewis Hamilton. What a performance. To jump in that car on a Friday morning, top practice, get within a few hundreds of his teammate in qualifying and prior to the team's pit stop cock up, look on to beat him in the race. A guy who's been in that car all year, all of that is exceptional and pretty much confirms what I've always thought about Russell. He has definitely got the potential and speed to be a star of the future and he's surely given Mercedes something to think about regarding its 2022 lineup. Where does he go from here, though? Well, unless something mad happens, he will be staying at Williams next year. And to be honest, it's just a case of continuing to learn and build on what he's done so far. Keep putting in the qualifying performances, cut out those few costly errors, and see if he can nab a point or two next year. But the future is definitely bright for Russell. As for his teammate, honestly, it's kind of tough to know what to say. I wasn't really expecting much from Nicholas Satifi this year, but I actually don't think he's been all that bad and has done a better job than perhaps I was expecting from him, and maybe better than some people realise. All right, yeah, he was battered 16-0 by Russell in qualifying, but he has performed well in the races. In fact, his average finish for the season is 15.42, whereas Russell's is 15.08. Okay, better, but there's not a huge difference between them. He's also, interestingly enough, had more top 11 finishes than his teammate picking up three, which means he would have finished ahead of George in the standings if Russell hadn't have had that race with Mercedes. So actually, he's done a pretty solid job in his first season, and to be honest, I was pleasantly surprised when I went over these stats. Of course, don't get me wrong, there is room for improvement, especially when it comes to his pace on a Saturday, but it's a decent start for him, and hopefully he will continue to build on that next year. I guess the buzzwords for Williams and Latifi are pretty much the same. Solid, and something to build on. I must very quickly mention Jack Aitken who subbed for Russell at Sakir. Not a massive amount to say as it was just the one weekend. 
but he did finish the race despite spinning at the final corner and losing his front wing and getting to the chequered flag was really the aim for him that weekend and he did it so well done to him and who knows maybe we'll see him back on the grid in the future. All in all though I've been really impressed with the step up Williams has taken and I also think both drivers have done a decent job as well but fingers crossed this is just the start and we will see Williams getting back to picking up consistent points again soon. That is it for this one though. You can let me know your thoughts on Williams' season down in the comments section. But also, and I'm going to be asking this in all of these videos, out of 10, so 1 being awful and 10 being the greatest thing you've ever seen, how would you personally rate the Williams team's season? Now, I will be back with a word on Hass's season soon. But in the meantime, don't forget that you can of course follow me over on social media and all of the links you need for that are in the description down below. But as ever, thank you for watching. I've been Sean. This has been the F1 Word. And until next time, goodbye.